It is a painful day for all of us. It's a painful day for all New Yorkers. It is a painful day for all members of the NYPD. Bill de Blasio with words of support for the NYPD following the shooting of one of their officers. Back now on Newsmax Prime, Officer Brian Moore died earlier today after he was shot in the face over the weekend. Moore and his partner on patrol in Queens when they spotted Demetrius Blackwell and started questioning him about an object in his waistband. That's when the subject pulled out a gun and allegedly shot Officer Moore. Moore was just 25 years old, a five-year veteran of the force, came from a law enforcement family, long line of cops among his relatives. Joining us now, former New York Police Commissioner Bernie Carrick. Bernie is the author of the book, From Jailer to Jail. Bernie, thanks for your time here on Newsmax Prime. This is the fifth shooting of an on-duty police officer in the past five months. Is this a direct result of all the anti-cop rhetoric? Well, you know what? I, I, you have to believe so. Uh, who knows what this kid was thinking? Um, the ironic thing is he's already, he was already arrested, uh, charged and, and imprisoned for attempted murder. And now he, uh, he took it a step further. You know, this kid, uh, Brian Moore, the cop, 25 years old, it meant he came on the job right around his 20th birthday. Um, his father's a retired cop, his cousin's a cop, his uncle is a cop, New York City cops. He comes from a family of police officers. Um, he was in a plain clothes unit, uh, an anti-crime unit, which means he had to be in a, ver a very aggressive uh, uniform cop to get into the position he was in. Um, it's a sad, sad day uh, for the New York City Police Department. And, and mindful of that, Bernie, uh, the mayor seemed to have softened his tune a little bit from initial problems a couple of months ago with the force. Do you believe Mayor de Blasio has a new appreciation for what NYPD officers face every day? Well, I hope he does. Uh, I mean, look, you know, the, you don't want to get into politics uh, on a day like this, but the reality is the cops in the New York City Police Department and cops all over this country, they need to be supported by our leadership. You know, the, the annoying thing for me today is, uh, you know, as I, as we mourn this cop, um, he was not a drug dealer. He didn't have a long rap sheet. Um, he was a pillar in his community. He was a, a protector for our society. Uh, he was somebody that stood between good and evil. But I don't hear any outrage. I don't hear any community leaders screaming and yelling. I don't hear the civil rights leaders screaming and yelling. I, I just, I don't hear any protest. I don't hear anything um, that went on when some others have died uh, over the last six, eight, ten months. Um, you know, that's bothersome. It's annoying. Th this kid and, and other cops like him um, go out every day, uh, you know, all over this country to protect and serve their communities. Uh, he died doing so. I think he, uh, he deserves um, respect. He deserves the, the uh, he, he deserves that outrage. And, uh, and it's just not there. Bernie, as you were making uh, some references, you talked about uh, drug dealing, a long rap sheet. That brought to mind Freddie Gray in Baltimore. Six officers there now charged in his death. But your initial reflection is that the charges don't exactly match up. Why is that? Well, first of all, I, nothing the, uh, the state's attorney said um, in my eyes. And, and look, um, Alan Dershowitz, you're, you're not getting a, a more brilliant uh, legal scholar in this country. He said the same thing. He didn't think the charges uh, met um, the statements uh, made by the uh, state's attorney. Um, look, something happened to Freddie Gray while he was in custody. Um, I, I just find it hard to believe that all six of those officers, um, you know, it, it, the way the statement of charges came out, it's, it's almost like they conspired, um, you know, in his death. I, I, I didn't hear that um, in the charges that were read. Uh, and I just don't see it. Uh, you know, maybe the state's attorney has something that I didn't see or hear. Um, and, but uh, look, when I look at somebody like Alan Dershowitz and some of these other legal scholars around the country saying that the case has major loopholes or, or major, major uh, problems, um, you know, I, I have to believe what they're saying. 
Uh, Bernie, a lot of pundits are saying that in the wake of this riot in Baltimore, really one of the root causes is uh, absent fathers because of incarceration for minor drug offenses. Do you think there's a point to that observation? Well, I think there is, you know, and you, you, it's, a, it's a balancing act when, when you go down this road. First time, nonviolent, low-level drug offenders, they're being put in prison for 10 and 15 years. Nonviolent, first-time offenders. Um, you know, everybody should be held accountable for their actions. Um, but in a state, in a, in a state criminal charge, something like that would be a misdemeanor. You know, they'd have to go to a program. They'd have to, you know, maybe they do community service or maybe they spend a minimal time in jail. In the federal system, and, and I, I reference Baltimore specifically because when I was away, I was with guys in Baltimore, first time low level drug offenders, nonviolent, 10 years, 15 years. You create monsters out of these kids, and then you send them back into a community where they're a convicted felon, where they can't get a job. They're basically deemed useless for the rest of their life. So they have to revert to crime as a mechanism of, of living. Um, and then we stand around in Washington and want to know, you know, why isn't the recidivism rate going down? Why are there fatherless, you know, kids out in the street in Baltimore, or Washington, D.C., or other areas in the minority communities? Uh, look, these guys aren't angels, uh, but I, I think there has to be a discussion on how we proceed um, it, with criminal charges, and, and I'm not talking And, just and you've moved forward in that discussion. Bernie, I'm sorry we're out of time. Bernie's the author of From Jailer to Jailed. We're coming right back.